A black and white shoreline wader. Beautiful red bill, beautiful red legs. The genus name for this bird is Somatopus. Heme, like haemoglobin of the red blood cell, and opus for foot. More commonly, we would know this bird as an oyster catcher, and all oyster catchers throughout the world belong to the genus Hematopus. Oyster catchers are in general of two types, black and white like we're looking at now, and then later we will look at the black oyster catchers. All oyster catchers show fidelity to their partner, and generally on an Australian sandy beach where the black and white or pied oyster catchers are found, they are found in pairs. Here is a black oyster catcher. In Australia, it is known as the sooty oyster catcher. In the 1990s, Sibley and Alquist published the genetic links between birds using DNA hybridisation techniques. But one of the families that were difficult to sort out were the Charadriidae, and oyster catchers belong to the family. A black and white oyster catcher on the beach in coastal New South Wales. It looks like a pied oyster catcher, but look at those legs. It's walking a little bit like a duck with a waddle. A short legged bird without a mate. And this shows the subtleties in the variation of the oyster catchers. And oyster catchers throughout the world are either black and white or black, with subtle variations in the blackness, sometimes being a little rufous, like the American oyster catcher, and the iris, sometimes being yellow instead of orange again in the American oyster catcher. Otherwise, the main variations between the black and white or the black oyster catcher throughout the world is the size of the bird. So this pied looking oyster catcher with the short legs is indeed a different bird. It comes from South Island, New Zealand and is the South Island pied oyster catcher. In New South Wales, the South Island Pacific Oyster Catcher can fly across the Tasman and can be found on the Australian beaches. So a solitary bird with short legs, a waddle and a slightly shorter bill always deserves a second look. Now back to the Australian Pied Oyster Catcher with the longer legs. In fact, you will soon see that it is a pair. As they move along the foreshore, look at the bill length. The male generally has a shorter bill and the male can be seen here in the foreground. To the background is a finer pointed bill, a little bit longer. This is the female. Otherwise, there is really no difference between the two birds. And in the field, I find it just about impossible unless they're standing side by side to tell a male from a female. The Australian Poet Oyster Catcher is different than the American Oyster Catcher. The American oyster catcher looks a little bit like the Australian immature pied oyster catcher. When living in California, I used to see them with a reddish back and the legs aren't so much orange, but more of a pale pink. And the difference of significance is that the American bird has a yellow iris. The pied oyster catcher's habitat in Australia is either sandy beaches or intertidal coastal mud flats. Here it feeds principally by probing into the sand or the mud, chasing mollusks or worms. This is in contrast to the black oyster catchers throughout the world. And we will look at one of the black oyster catchers in Australia, called the sooty oyster catcher. But the essence of the difference is that the sooty or the black oyster catcher varieties prefer rocky shorelines. Oyster catchers like oysters or other bivalves. Here this oyster catcher is going like a jackhammer trying to split a bivalve open to get to the flesh without much success, totally ignoring the crabs wandering up and down the beach. So he is far more selective in his diet than what we will see with the sooty oyster catcher later. And as mentioned, the diet of the pied oyster catcher is mostly retrieved by probing into the beach sand or the mud flat feeding not by vision but by using the vibrosensory organism on the tip of the bill to detect subsurface invertebrates. This juvenile bird was probably probing for worms when it found this small shellfish and I don't think it really knows what to do. Notice again, this has pale pink legs and rufous colouring over the wing. 
an immature pied Australian oyster catcher. And here an adult and a juvenile going together along the beach, one with orange legs, one with pale legs. This juvenile with the pale legs also has a very dark iris. And this dark iris and the pale legs are features of a juvenile pied oyster catcher. This youngster is very close to maturity, its legs will go more orange and the rufous on the outer wing will go black as it matures. But it's very interesting, just watch what happens here. It's happily grazing off the intertidal sand bed and suddenly the adult says no, you don't eat that and chases it off. I'm not too sure what it was but certainly there is an instruction in what to eat and what not to eat. Most of the waders or the charad reforms have a very sensitive tip to the bill, capable of finding food under the sand or mud without vision. This is in total contrast to the sooty oyster catcher that feeds mostly by sight. See the soldier crabs on the surface? The pied oyster catcher doesn't even think of making them into a meal. Now some of the other grazing habits. Here amongst the marsh, grass and samphire, the oyster catchers are chasing insects. In many charad reforms, including the oyster catchers, there are various techniques of partner bonding, including running at high speed up and down along a shoreline. Here the shorter build male is in the foreground. And there are always consequences of romantic actions like this. The nest of an Australian pied oyster catcher is a simple scrape in the ground like it is with many other Charadriidae. And as the birds mature, so the adults will take them out onto the mud banks to learn how to probe for worms and oysters. Here on this estuarine coastal area, there are oyster beds and these bivalves are the delicacy. Just watch as this oyster catcher completely submerges its head under the water, prizes open the bivalve, then devours the oyster all without vision. Such an amazing bird. I've put in a freeze frame and notice that this bird has a little black fleck on the orange iris. This suggests that it's a female bird. However, I suspect this sexing identity of the fleck on the female iris is more a feature of the American and the Eurasian oyster catcher. Roosting is often done on one leg with one eye open. Being waders, at high tide, the oyster catchers will spend this time roosting, waiting for the tide to fall. For as most of the feeding is done by probing, they feed on the intertidal areas at low tide, as do the golden plovers and the curlew sandpipers. Finally, I want to again mention bonding techniques between the male and the female bird. Walking at a fast rate is one activity, and the other, again doing it very fast, is flying in a straight line as a pair. For a considerable time I lived above this small pebble beach on the coast of New South Wales and a morning walk around the rock pool was always a treat, especially in springtime. For year by year, as the weather warmed, so a sooty oyster catcher pair returned and explored the rock pools just like me, 
they were breeding, I don't know where they nested, but here this pebbly bay was their home for three months a year. There are black coloured oyster catchers in America, Africa and Eurasia. The one in Australia is called the sooty oyster catcher. And the black oyster catchers from around the world vary a little bit in the colour of the legs, the colour of the feathers and their size. And out of all the black type oyster catchers, this sooty oyster catcher in Australia is the biggest. And the common feature of all the black oyster catchers is that they like to live by the surf, feeding more with vision than by probing into sand or mud. In this rocky coastline environment, the sooty oyster catcher's diet is interesting. He is mainly after shellfish, in particular limpets, but he will also eat crab. Again like the pied oyster catcher, the sooty oyster catcher exhibit mate fidelity as a bonded pair. But when mating season is over, they are far more gregarious, coming together as groups. Initially as small family groups, then later coming together mostly for roosting as a flock. Another limpet, and the sooty oyster catcher likes to live by the stony beach for the shellfish attached to the rocks and as the waves come over the rocks so the shellfish relaxes its foot plate and the shell slightly rises off the rock allowing the shellfish to take in nutrient water. This is an opportune moment for the oyster catcher to prize the shellfish off the rock and so meals are obtained by the wave action but just like the pied oyster catcher so the sooty oyster catcher does like a low tide and there hidden amongst the rock pools there are many delicacies. Here at a very low tide you can see the oyster catchers just having a feast going down into the crevasses looking for little delicacies. The group structure of the sooty oyster catcher is most interesting. For most part, a pair will have a territorial area like the bay that I showed you previously. As the chicks become more mature, they move as a family group, leaving the territorial breeding area. And here a family have moved to a rock shelf further along the coast. The immature birds still have a bit of rufous mottling, whereas the adults are black all over. Notice the difference now in the leg colouring. They have reverted to a pale pink instead of the bright orange colour of breeding mode. Again here, shellfish are on the menu. See the jackhammer type action to get that limpet off the rock? And notice the tip of the bill is more chisel in its shape than that of the pied oyster catcher, more suited for chiseling the shellfish off the rocks. The sooty oyster catcher is Hematopus fuliginosa. Hematopus, red foot, and fuliginosus is Latin for sooty. Other birds can be found doing the same thing, like the turnstones. Here there are approximately 30 birds out on this rock shelf. Such a delight to see, especially considering the New South Wales population is only 250. Most of the breeding of the sooty terns happens off the coast, on small islands. Breeding on the coastline has its own difficulties, and unfortunately if there is interference by humans, four-wheel drives or dogs, the oyster catcher will leave the chicks hoping that they will not be discovered, but often when this happens they are prone to predation. Notice the different feeding pattern between the pied and the sooty. The sooty feeds off vision, 
watching for relaxation of the shellfish after it's been washed by a wave, waiting for the moment to go and chisel it off the rock. If it's a bivalve in a crevice, their bill becomes a jackhammer prizing it open. One interesting thing with the sooty oyster catcher is that after it's got to the flesh, the bird will then often take this edible component to a pool and wash it. And you can see with this sooty oyster catcher how the water is splashing up as it washes the limpet from its shell. This concludes our video on the oyster catchers in Australia. We have shown you three species and we hope you have enjoyed this production. For notification of further releases of Australian birds in the wild, please subscribe.